Good morning, sisters and brothers, and welcome to this morning's morning prayer. Today is uh, the 20, the 23rd, Thursday, the 23rd of December, the eve before Christmas Eve. And so today is um, the, today, uh, the last the last of our morning and evening prayer for this year. And um, we'll pick up again the second week after, yeah, the second week in January. So we'll start the, not the first, not next week, but the week after when the children go back to school. So today will be our last um, um, time together before we take a break, before I take a break um, and um, focus on the Christmas um, services. So hopefully I will see some of you either Christmas Eve, um, Friday night, tomorrow night, or Christmas Day, Saturday morning, or, or on Boxing Day, Sunday morning, or, or all three, if you're brave enough to to be out for all three um let's um so i will I'll, I'll see some of you then otherwise for the morning and evening prayer purposes i will i'll, I'll, I'll do this evening and then and then i'll take a break until the week after the second week of january all right so let's pray let's begin this day with our prayers O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Reveal among us the light of your presence, that we may behold your power and glory. Blessed are you, sovereign God of all. To you be praise and glory forever. In your tender compassion, the dawn from on high is breaking upon us to dispel the lingering shadows of night. As we look for your coming among us this day, open our eyes to behold your presence and strengthen our hands to do your will, that the world may rejoice and give you praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Lift up your voice with strength, O herald of good tidings. The wilderness and the dry land shall rejoice. The desert shall blossom and burst into song. They shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. Strengthen the weary hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to the anxious, be strong, fear not. Your God is coming with judgment, coming with the judgment to save you. Then shall the eyes of the blind be opened, and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then shall the lame leap like a heart, and the tongue of the dumb sing for joy. For waters shall break forth in the wilderness, and streams in the desert. The ransomed of the Lord shall return with singing, with everlasting joy upon their heads. Joy and gladness shall be theirs, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Lift up your voice with strength, O herald of good tidings. Now it is time to awake out of sleep. 
for the night is far spent and the day is at hand. Now is our salvation nearer than when we first believed, for the night is far spent. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light, for the day is at hand. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh, for the night is far spent and the day is at hand. Like the sun in the morning sky, the Savior of the world will dawn. Like rain upon the meadows, the Christ will come down upon us. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of all that hate us, Free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our lives. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High. You will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from an high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Like the sun in the morning sky, the Savior of the world will dawn. Like rain upon the meadows, the Christ will come down upon us. And our, and our special prayer. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and to put on the armor of light, now in the time of this mortal life, in which your Son, Jesus Christ, came to us in great humility, that on the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal through him who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our psalm for this morning is Psalm number 130. 130. My soul waits for the Lord. Out of the depths have I cried to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears consider well the voice of my supplication. If you, Lord, were to mark what is done amiss, O Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you, so that you shall be feared. 
I wait for the Lord. My soul waits for him. In his word is my hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than the night watch for the morning. More than the night watch for the morning. O Israel, wait for the Lord. For with the Lord there is mercy. With him is plenteous redemption, and he shall redeem Israel from all their sins. Hallelujah. My soul waits for the Lord. Father, we commend to your faithful love those who are crying from the depths. Help them to watch and pray. Through their time of darkness, Ensure hope of the dawn of your forgiveness and redemption through our Savior Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Wait for the Lord, my soul. Wait for the Lord. In his word is my hope. Sisters and brothers, this psalm is so comforting and so... Uh, such a, 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 a wonderful psalm to think about, meditate on. Wait for the Lord. With the Lord there is forgiveness. If God should mark our transgressions, who could stand? None of us would be able to stand in his presence. If the Lord should mark, that is to, to, to put a, a, a tick beside our transgression, a mark, if he should make a list of our transgressions, sisters and brothers, none of us would have a leg to stand on before the Lord. But, says the psalmist, with the Lord there is forgiveness, so shall so we so that we shall fear him. We have the forgiveness. And so therefore I wait for the Lord. My soul, my soul wait for the Lord. Waits for the Lord. In his word is my hope. And so sisters and brothers, whatever, whatever our situation today, let us wait for the Lord. You know, put our hope. Wait is a way of saying, um, I am trusting in the Lord. I am hoping in the Lord. Wait and hope are similar. Is that hope? Um waiting on the lord actually let's um let's leave that there and move on to our new testament reading <clears throat> right so that's a verse chapter matthew chapter 23 ah matthew 23 matthew 23 we've skipped over 20 21 22, yep, 23, Matthew 23, 1 to 12. There, we've skipped over a few chapters in the readings. Don't know why, but that's on the lectionary reading. So we are at chapter 23, 1 to 12. Then Jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples, The teachers of the law and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. So you must be careful to do everything they tell you. But do not do what they do, for they do not practice what they preach. They tie up heavy, cumbersome loads and put them on other people's shoulders. But they themselves are not willing to lift a finger to move them. Everything they do is done for people to see. They make their phylacteries wide and the tassels on their garments long. They love the place of honor at banquets and the most important seats in the synagogues. They love to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces and to be called rabbi by others. But you are not to be called rabbi. 
that you have one teacher and you are all brothers. Do not call anyone on earth father, for you have one father and he is in heaven. Nor are you to be called instructors or teachers, for you have one teacher, the Messiah. The greatest among you will be your servant, for those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. All right, so, uh, <clears throat> a teaching on humility, one of the one of Jesus' favorite topics, subjects to teach on. Sometimes he used a child to teach humility and, and so on. And now he's using the opposite. He's using the, the Pharisees. What I love about what Jesus says here is that the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, they sit in Moses' seat. So listen to what they teach you. In other words, they are teaching the, 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 the truths of Scripture. They are teaching the scriptures, so you are to listen to their teaching because what they are teaching is, is it is in fact from the scripture. But don't do as they do 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 not do not look at their behavior and practice. Don't follow their behavior because they don't practice what they preach. It's one thing he said. He said on the one hand, you can preach the word of God. You can be faithful and sincere in teaching God's word, but then you are not practicing it yourself. And so Jesus said, we are to listen to those who teach the word, but do not emulate their lives because that they don't, know, they don't normally practice what they preach. And it is one of those things, sisters and brothers, those of us who, who preach and teach the word of God, this is the challenge for us. We must not only teach it, but we must seek to practice what we preach. And so if we are expecting people, we are teaching that this is what God expects of people, we must seek by God's grace to do to practice what we are preaching and not become hypocrites like these people, the Pharisees, teachers of the law, that Jesus is condemning here. So in the one hand, Jesus is commending the fact that they do teach what is right. They sit in Moses' seat. They are teaching the truth. But in their lives, they do not follow up what they teach. And so they tie up heavy, cumbersome loads and put them on people's shoulders. But they themselves are not willing to lift a finger to move them. And they seek places of honor and they seek to do... Uh, that second part is that they, they do their religion, their, their, their piety, their righteousness for people to acknowledge them and to, 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 to say how wonderful they are. So they, they are called rabbi. They love titles. So, so Jesus said we are not to love titles. Titles may come. You may have a title. You may be reverend so and so, or doctor so and so, or right, honorable so and so, whatever. You may have titles, but Jesus said we are not to we are not to love titles like the Pharisees, because that is just a sign of pride. You may have titles, but use them sparingly. That you are not to be using titles uh, as a sign of your uh, 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 of your piety, of your knowledge, of your of your faith, of your righteousness, and so on. No. Uh, so, so titles, rabbi, teacher, doctor, um, and what is your father? Uh, and all of these titles, Jesus said, there's no, nothing wrong with titles. Jesus was a rabbi, and Jesus was called a rabbi. And in fact, the disciples were called rabbis, and so on. And they were called apostles, and these sorts of things. But the point is, Jesus is not saying titles are wrong. He's saying that we're not to seek our titles and we're not to use our, our titles to exalt ourselves. The whole point, the whole thrust of the, of the message is that we are, to, we are to be humble, not to be exalted. We are not to exalt ourselves. We're not to seek the best seats in the house. We're not to seek, we're not, we're not to wear our, our faith, our religion on our sleeves. You know, the phylacteries and the tassels. 
These are the things, these are the religious garments that the Pharisees wear. And they, and, and they do this as a show. They wear them in the marketplace. They wear them, you know, they wear them all over. They don't need to, but they do. And so Jesus is saying, um, don't be like that. Do not wear your religion on the outside. That is the key, sisters and brothers. If you do that, you're just doing it for a show. You're just doing it to impress people. But instead, he says, the greatest among you will be your servant. Those who, are exalt, who exalt themselves will be humbled. And those who humble themselves will be exalted. Sisters and brothers, this is a fundamental teaching of Jesus in all of Scripture. That the, you know, Mary, in her song, she said, God brings down the proud and exalts the humble and the weak. That is God's modus operandi. That is the way God works. The proud is, <clears throat> is brought down and the humble is lifted up. And so he, he requires humility in us. Not, um, not for us to show off our religion. And it's so easy when you get when you become religious to wear your religion on your sleeve so that everybody can see that you are religious. This is, you know, to, as, a, as a form of show, as a form of, to, of showing off your piety and your, so, so you like titles. I personally don't like titles. You know, I, I, I am given the title reverend. I personally don't like it. People call me that because that's the title I have. But I don't like titles. My name is just Cornelius. <laughs> so, but, but that's fine. I, I, I do not introduce myself as Reverend Cornelius. I mean, no, 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 no. Never, never do that. So, so, but, but, but the point is, is that, I mean, some people do. But the point I'm making, and I point, think the point Jesus is making, is that we are not to use titles as a means to puff up ourselves, to exalt ourselves, to make ourselves more important than we really are. Uh, uh, we are instead, we are to be humble. We are to humble ourselves in, our, in, 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 in the way we, we, we relate to one another, in our, in our clothing even. Uh, um, we are not to show off like the Pharisees used to do in their, they wear their religious garment uh, everywhere they went to, so that people know that they are rabbi and they are, you know, they are officials and so forth. All right, I think I'll leave it there, but that's, uh, that's the lesson for today, humility. And it's a lesson for all of us, not just for those of us who have titles. <laughs> it's a lesson for all God's people because we are all called to humility and not pride, pride, and let's see which goes before fall. Mm. All right, let's pray. So this morning, Lord, we we come another day. We are grateful for this new day, uh, this Eve before Christmas Eve. We thank you that as we draw nearer to that special day when we celebrate the dawning of the light of the world into our world. And so, Lord, we ask that you will fill our hearts with joy. Help us to wait on you and to find strength and hope and love in the birth of the child. Lord, may the birth of the child bring us salvation, bring salvation to our souls, to our lives. And so, Lord, we pray that you'll help us to live a life of humility, to seek to be humble in all that we do so that we do not seek, we do not uh, wear our religion on our sleeves, as it were, on the outward, on the outside, simply for a show so that others will know who we are in our religion rather than in our hearts. And so, Lord, help us, we pray to be humble in our faith, in our righteousness, in our piety. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. And so this morning in our, on our electoral road, we're praying for Veronica. 
Veronica, uh, this is Veronica and Chester actually. So, so let's uh, pray for Veronica and Chester and, and, and their family. And so Lord, hear our prayer for our sister Veronica and her family and her husband Chester and, and the children and grandchildren. We lift them up to you and we pray for your mercy and grace upon them. In Jesus' name, amen. And the road we are praying for is Brooklyn Road. Brooklyn Road in our parish. And um, Angela lives on Brooklyn Road. So we pray for Angela and family this morning. And pray for God's mercy and grace upon her. That God will continue to sustain her. We pray for all those who live on Brooklyn Road. Her neighbors and others. Especially those who do not know Jesus in any meaningful sense. The light has come into the world. But people, sinners, prefer darkness to the light. And so, Lord, we pray for those who live in the dark oh, on Brooklyn Road. We pray that you will reveal to them your light. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And, uh, and, and let's uh, just mention some of the names on our prayer list this morning. So remember, um, Vesna's husband, Mokund, Ella's daughter, Wendy, our sister Joanna, Dian, and we think of Yvonne and the fam and the rest of the family as well. Remember Jane, Lindsay, and Joyce, and Sue, and Daisy, and Andrew, and the on, on the whole Lindsay family. Think of Pauline and Roy, and the family. We pray for um, Doreen and her family here and abroad. Pray for Muriel. We pray for um, David and Bernadette Hoyt. Pray for Ryan, my friend in America. Pray for Dolly and Desmond. Pray for Thelma. Pray for Auntie Jamie. We pray for Jean and Walter and Monica as well. And so Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. <clears throat> okay, and uh, another set prayer. Keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy. In this time of uncertainty and distress, sustain and support the anxious and fearful and lift up all who are brought low, that we may rejoice in your comfort, knowing that nothing can separate us from your love in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O gracious and holy Father, give us wisdom to perceive you, diligence to seek you, patience to wait for you, eyes to behold you, a heart to meditate upon you, and a life to proclaim you through the power of the Spirit of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ be with me, Christ within me. Christ behind me, Christ before me, Christ beside me, Christ to win me, Christ to comfort and restore me, Christ beneath me, Christ above me, Christ in quiet, Christ in danger, Christ in hearts of all that love me, Christ in mouth of friend and stranger. Amen. And we pray, of course, continue to pray for our world amid this pandemic. And we ask God, O oh Lord, that you will have mercy on our world. And we ask that you will bring deliverance from this pandemic, we pray. Remember, O oh God, those who are sick, those who are in hospital. Remember also our, uh, our care service, the doctors, nurses, carers. We pray for their health. We pray for their strength. We pray that you'll give them grace to care and to protect them as well from this dreaded disease, COVID. And so, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer for ourselves and for our world. Lord, we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. 
forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Sisters and brothers, have a blessed day and a peaceful and joyful and holy Christmas if I do not see you between now and then. And so may the Lord bless you and keep you and watch over you and give you his salvation, his deliverance that we wait for in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Happy Christmas, one and all.